Hey everybody, it's Trigger Bar Philosopher, back out at the range. Today we're going to be doing a review of the Lab Radar. Had it on the channel for quite a while, and I've had it for a couple of years, and so a lot have had some people asking me questions about this feature or that feature, so I thought I'd do a full review today. Let's get going. All right, so today we're going to be talking about the lab radar. We'll be doing some testing and we'll be doing some looking at it. I really don't have a chronograph to compare it against, but I'm just going to talk about my experiences and what I feel about the lab radar after owning it for a couple of years. So the lab radar is this device here, and it comes with just that device there. And what it does is it uses radar technology to measure the speed of the bullet. What are some of the accessories that come with it are this battery pack, which I did get from Lab Radar, and I do like. It comes with some Velcro. It comes with a cord that powers the device. You, of course, can use your own backup power device. I got this tripod from Lab Radar that came with it. it. allows you to mount it at various heights. It can go up a little bit higher. And then, of course, I got the bag. I figured if I was going to be investing uh, this much into the Lab Radar itself, I also should get a good carrying case. It's padded. Let's just take a look at it. It's padded, comes with protection. So usually I'll put the lab radar down in here. I'll put the battery in this pocket. I also have the manual here. And then I will put the tripod into this front pocket and I'll just carry it all together. So yeah, that's what, that's what I like about it or that's what I use it for. So let's see if we can get any visuals on this thing functioning. Uh, lab radar is is pretty good. There are a few kind of idiosyncrasies with the lab radar that you need to be aware of if you buy one. One of those is that one of the great parts about the lab radar is that it it sits behind you as you're shooting. If you see any of my other or sorry in front of you as you're shooting, but you really just shoot off to the side of it, and so your muzzle can be anywhere from here to here. Um, you know, the side it can be from here to here. Um, it can be a little in front. It can be a little behind really not a big difference. Same thing is true when you're shooting rifles. Uh, you, the, the nice thing and one of the key benefits I would say about using a lab radar is that unlike a chronograph, which need, you have to shoot through a little hole in or a little tent canopy on it, you have to shoot the bullet right over it. This, what you do, it comes with a little aiming sight and you aim that sight at the target that you're going to be shooting at and uh, then it will pick up the sound. It is sound or pick up the uh, bolt projectiles that's going down range. The lab radar is sound activated. And so that gets us to, oh, I gotta get this thing turned on. That, that gets us to a couple of the features on the lab radar that I wanted to go over in some of the settings. So if we come in here, it can store up to a hundred series of, of bullets. You also can connect and download this through either an SD card over here, or you can, and, and that, that, that's what you can do. So you can store more, and then you can download what you have. And sorry, uh, but I don't really do that. I don't download all of my shots and, and store them on a hard disk. There are a lot of people that do that, especially if you're reloading and you want to know exactly the profile and the speeds and all of those things. Um, I, I just don't do that. Uh, so usually what I do is I fill up my series and then I just start deleting them. So we have a series here and you just select it. Do you want to delete this series and say yes. So now instead of 64, I had 63. Um, you can pretty easily, once this is how it comes on and turns on, it gives you the last sort of stats of your last thing shot. So you'll often notice in some of my videos, I'll power cycle uh, the lab radar and get it to reboot, and then it tells me immediately what the averages are. I'm sure there's easier ways to get there, but that's that's what I do to, to get to it fast. So if you ever want to do a new series, you press this button. Want to create a new series? Yes. And so that creates a new series where all of your averages and everything are sort of zeroed out. If you want to get to the settings, that's up in this button up here. So the first thing that you can change is, you know, do you want feet per second, yards per second, miles per hour, meters per second, different options like that. You know, distance units, you know, whether you're in feet or yards or meters or whatever it is. Weight units, uh, you can select between grains and grams. And so you can go in and enter what your bullet weights and it'll collect, uh, calculate energy for you and things like that. Another one is velocity range. That's one I use a lot. And that's one that you have to use a little bit of judgment when you're going to guess how fast is the bullet or projectile going to go 
when I when I'm going to be shooting this round. And there are kind of ranges in that. And so when you're shooting a projectile at around 1550, 1600 feet per second, that's really in between rifle and handgun. And I've seen it have problems, especially on like the 5.7 by 28, a little bit of problems in that range, picking up the projectile and really making, being able to, to tell what, it, what it's on. It also has archery. So that's when you start to get sub, you know, 600, 500 feet per second. You want to put it in archery range and then above that sort of 1600 feet per second, you're going to want to go rifle. So you shoot slow subsonic bullets, uh, you're going to want to be in handgun mode. Also, if you're shooting suppressed, they do have an attachment. You can add a microphone onto this device, and I think that's through this port down here. I had one, and a friend of mine, I actually bought one for my friend's lab radar, and I said he could have it. So I've used one. I just don't have one with this. It was hit or miss of whether it worked. It's actually supposed to be used for airsoft um, as well as archery and helping pick up the when the when the round leaves the barrel, but uh, didn't have a lot of luck with that. And so that's maybe a downside to using the lab radars. If you're shooting suppressed uh, a, a lot and you want to know your bullet velocity on suppressed, then I then I think that that's something that maybe this isn't the best for, and there are better options that are out there, potentially the chronograph or magneto speed might be better options for that in, in picking it up. Typically what I do in doing my load development when doing reloading or these other things is I just do it with, you know, I shoot it without the suppressor on and, and, and get, my, get my readings. So obviously the big advantage, why would someone do this? This is roughly the same as maybe buying four, chronographs is about the same price as this right here maybe maybe three depending on the price you're getting them two if you buy the really deluxe versions that do some of the same things as this but again you have to shoot through a, a right above the chronograph so your chances of hitting it are pretty high and people hit those so my calculation is look if i'm going to hit that two or three times or five times then it's better to go off with a lab radar that I really have no chance of hitting. Knock on wood, I'm probably going to be the first one to ever hit their lab radar somehow. Uh, but but it's it's really, yeah, you're really not going to hit it. And then also, if you work at ranges where you can't walk down range, then, then that's something to consider. So if you're going to be using it at ranges where you're not allowed down range, there's a lot of people on the range, or, you know, I used to go to an indoor range where you weren't allowed to go in, in down range. They, they moved the targets to you and you just never could go down range. And, and, and so uh, lab radar is perfect. You can set it up in your little thing. I have had issues when you're shooting right next to other people on, on the range where it might pick up the other bullet. But um, if you have a position or two or three between you, space between other people, I've definitely shot it on the same range and I've gotten what I feel are accurate velocity readings. The other place where, where this thing, and so I would say that's really where this thing shines. We want to shoot your chronograph and, and, and you want to be able to use it right next to you. So I would say that that's sort of the, the key advantage. The disadvantage of this uh, is, is is shooting suppressed indoors. If you go to an indoor shooting range and it's a pretty narrow hallway, that will mess up with the radar. The, it requires you to the target to be about 16 yards out. So if you only have a 15 yard shooting range or a 10 yard shooting range, definitely wouldn't go with the lab radar. I also think that, uh, and so, so, you know, what are some of the other alternatives? You can go with the magneto speed, which actually solves sort of the same problem that you don't need to go down range that you just attach it onto the, to the uh, muzzle device of your gun. And they have adapters for pistols and they have adapters for uh, your rifles. And those certainly can work. I just don't really like having something on my gun when I'm shooting. And so that's more of a preference thing. There are others that say that it will mess with the harmonics of the gun. Uh, so if you are trying to shoot both for accuracy groups and for uh, velocity placements at the same time, then, then the magneto speed might not be the best option for you. But certainly it is a cheaper option than the Labradar uh, and, and you know, has some of the same 
things that you're not going to shoot your, your your instrument and go through instruments over and over and over. And then you have the chronograph and there are great things. Another kind of downside about chronograph is is when it's when it's sunny and the weird angles, it really relies on a shadow and it measures the shadow passing over the chronograph. And so shadows can get messed up uh, by different lighting conditions and so on and so forth. So you see a lot of YouTubers and other people have problems with their chronograph uh, when the lighting isn't right and, and it's kind of wonky. You just don't seem to have that problem with the lab radar. In summary, I think the lab radar has been a good investment for me as a reloader, as a shooter, trying to understand my projectile energies, trying to you know, I definitely use it when I'm reloading. I, I will shoot a series of, of, of rounds and I'll find the peaks and valleys. And sometimes I will graph it uh, if, I, if I shoot a big group to find out if there are plateaus in my velocities. Uh, and then I try to reload uh, around in those plateaus where a grain weight, what I mean by a plateau is you vary the grain weights uh, of powder into your round by you know, a few grains and you're not seeing hardly any velocity changes. Sometimes you'll see your velocity changes, you know, for every two grains you add, you, you add 25 feet or 50 feet per second of velocity. Well, sometimes what you see is you add two grains and it's the same velocity as before. And then you add another two grains, the same velocity as the one before. And, and, and so that's a, or close to it. And, and that's a good indication that you've hit kind of a little plateau in your in your powder. That's a good range to, because you can get consistency. If you're varying your bullet, how many grains isn't it by one or two grains, you know it's not gonna change the accuracy because it's always gonna be that same velocity. So you're gonna get consistency. So I use that as a starting point. And then I shoot groups for accuracy and find out what my gun likes uh, the best. Even though there's a plateau, it doesn't mean the harmonics of my barrel are gonna match up with the accuracy of it. Uh, you know, and then definitely love the features on this where it tells me my my averages and, and can be used to calculate energy if you enter in the grain weights of the bullets and things like that. But all right. So what I have here today, I have I have my SIG XXL. It's got the Parker Mountain machine. It's got the XL slide on it's Parker Mountain machine compensator on it has the Icarus Precision X Macro Evo grip on it. And I had to re put on my optic, remount it. It was uh, found it. I had some bad screws on it that were moving around on me. And so I'm going to uh, just kind of re zero this guy and run, you know, show how we use the thing. I do have some nine millimeter Luger Extreme Defender Platinum Edition. They're 68 green, they're plus P. They should be going 1800 feet per second. Let's see what we get in the lab radar. Eighteen thirty-two. Okay, and what we got there was an error where it said it, it couldn't acquire it. Reason is this is going eighteen hundred feet per second. That's right up in that threshold. Probably need to shoot, switch this to a rifle round. So let's do that right now. I turn it off. That's the way I do it. I'm sure there's other ways to do it. I go up here. I select a new group, or actually, yeah, uh, select the velocity range, and I switch it from handgun to rifle. There's one other aspect that I didn't show when I was going over it before, but once I have my velocity range selected that I'm going to choose on rifle, come over here, say I want to create a new group. Now you can tell up there there's a rifle up there. I press this button twice. Once, you get the VO still blue press it again you're now orange you're ready for your velocity at zero yards and you are ready to shoot so let's shoot now this group see what we get with this gun Sixteen ninety four. that's more like it 1753 We got an error with that. Make sure we're lined up there. To get an error, you gotta you gotta say okay. Press enter. Seventeen thirty-seven. Seventeen eighty-two. Seventeen eighty-six. 
1788 and 1720. Again, then what I do is I turn it off, turn it back on, come over here and it gives you sort of a summary. See there, it shows about I have, I have an average of 1752, high of 1788, low of 7, 1694. Stream spread was 94, that's pretty big. Um, standard deviation of 36 and it, and it recorded seven shots. Let me know what you think. Is are, are you a magneto speed guy? Are you or gal? Are you a? Although I know 99% of you are men, and I have a strong suspicion that the other 1% of you are actually men using their wives or girlfriends' accounts. So there's that. But uh, so if you guys, what, what do you what do you use uh, uh, for for your ac or for your velocity testing on on bullets are using lab radars or using chronographs or using magneto speeds is this something that you're interested in uh, please put it in the comments below if you haven't already subscribed please do that appreciate you hitting the like button and uh, hope you all have a great day thank you